This is Comic Picks by the Glick. Hey, I'm your host, Jason Glick. Good evening, Jason Glick. How are you doing? I'm doing as well as can be expected in the sense that, you know, we're not at fun of me anymore. Yeah, was, this is just T-9? <laughs> 40, 49 <laughs> weeks until ne- until Fun of May 2017. Yeah, if you want to put it, you know, count down from the time we left Fun of May to now... You know, which is a plus eight, or you want to count down to the next event, which is uh, what? 50, did you say fifty-one weeks and forty-nine started? weeks? Forty-nine weeks, everyone. Yeah. So, I, <laughs> as I was telling John uh, earlier, it's like we, I need to find an, a con to go to in between these. You know, that isn't Comic Con, um, to like you know get off this whole like you know like oh I gotta wait until like the ne- my next this my favorite con has another another one next year, and all the friends I'm trying to get to go to it as well. So. But in the meantime, I try to amuse myself by reading comics. And the good news is that um, the uh, last volume in a uh, maxi series for a series I've been following has finally come out. And that would be the final volume of Sergio Aragonia's Gru. Now, it's like this would be a th- the third volume of um, his series Friends and Foes. That um, after, like a, after about a year, a couple of years off from doing, doing his trademark character, Sergio is back. I mean, yeah, we got the Gru versus Conan um, miniseries um, last year, but that was followed up by a uh, twelve-issue um, run where where um, Gru um, meets up his um, meets mixes things up with his um, famous with his um, supporting supporting cast. I mean, you've got got the guys. I mean, you got the Sage, you got the Minstrel, you got his um, would-be lover, um, Shakal, um, you got nefarious guys, um, Toronto Palindrome. And his um sister Gruella and Granny Gru as well, but you know it's like it's it's like it's been good good fun because it's because uh, like um well I'm getting ahead of myself here. Um, Sergio Aragonia's Gru was um created by the art artist and um also and has been also been co-written with um with his fellow from, from his um erstwhile wordsmith um Mark Varnier um for for well over uh, two decades now I think yeah. Oh, oh man! It's like the the uh, twenty. Yeah, that's right. The, the uh, they're talking about the uh, silver anniversary of Gru was um, back in uh, it's like twenty like twenty twelve, I think, and then um, like the golden anniversary is in um, twenty thirty two. Which twenty thirty? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, my math is some terrible here, but um, Gru is um based on a very simple concept. You know, what would Conan be if he was very very dumb? And that's basically, um, and that's basically how, that's basically the one note that that Gru has been hitting for um, over for over two for over twenty five years now. It's like Gru is like he is the best there is at what he does, but what he he does is usually um, accompanied by by lots and lots of stupidity. He's a, he's a un, unparalleled swordsman, but you know it's like whenever he, he tries to help out, he'll wind up destroying stuff, and um, he's only good at um, fighting. At I'm um, jumping into frays and and fighting guys on both sides to make sure that they that um hey there is no one left to fight. So it's so I mean it's it's basically yeah it's it's a one note joke. Gru like he's really dumb. It's like and he's and he's um but he's also like an invincible sword swordsman. So, so but um but um Aragonias and Nevanier have um done a, a astonishing job of um finding. It's like a finding ways to um, stretch this joke over the years. I mean, first, first they did it um, for like, for um, two publishers who are now defunct, um, Pacific and Eclipse Comics. Then they had a um, massive ten-year run over at Marvel for hu- Marvel's Epic Imprint for over 120 issues, and um, a good chunk of those have been reprinted by Dark Horse. Um, but uh, well, they were reprinted, but you know the reprints are now out of print and. Um, Varnier um, teased a year ago that they, they were they were close to coming up with like some sort of omnibus treatment for for Gru, but that seems to have um, fallen by the wayside um, at at the moment. In the meantime, though, you know, they also did let's see what they also did um, a couple it's like a bunch of issues for Im- for Image, and then and then they went to um, Dark Horse, which has been Gru's home for well for, for like like the past fifteen years or so. Now, it's like it's worth noting that um, when with the uh, transition to Dark Horse, um, Gru has um, basically come into a, being a series of miniseries, and also it's like it's also the um, the folk the focus of the series has also changed as well. For while the uh, because the uh, like the ongoing series at um, at um, 
again, Marvel's epic imprint. Um, that was it was basically like you know just like grew wandering from place to place, encountering his um, one member of his supporting cast, or just you know just um, like or just finding some some random people and just um, inter- interacting with them, either like you know destroying stuff or like um, causing some un- some financial calamity as a result of his um, terminal cluelessness. Um, it's it's like it's it's basically like a you know parody of like you know standard Conan sword and sorcery stuff. And the uh, s- the issues republished by Dark Horse are definitely worth your time, assuming you can find them for a decent price. Because well, it's like they're I believe they're out, most of them are out of print right now. In fact, the one that I don't own, the Gru Jamboree, um, now if I wanted to own it, I'd have to pay upwards of twenty five bucks, which is a very significant markup from its nine dollar from its um ten dollar cover price. So, so I mean, yeah, it's like I'm looking forward to like the the day when we can get um re, um proper reprints of of Gru. Hope maybe ideally in Dark Horse's omnibus format because that 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 that's done well for them for other series. But um, but until then, like you know, Dark Horse still still has a bunch of their um their other miniseries from from Sergio and Mark. It's like in in print as well. It's like or digitally too, but. But here's the thing. Um, the Dark Horse stuff is business um, has a lot of, uh, I guess, you'd say a strong moral center to it. Basically, um, these these series, um, starting with the most intelligent man in the world, basically involve Gru um, encountering some kind of social, um, like um, social ill, like like basically, um, like most intelligent man in the world basically deals with the problems of drugs in the modern, it's like in the modern world. But also with um, how um, even people who are who are supposedly intelligent can also um, make the wrong and um, like choice. It's like choices as, w- as well. It's like then you've also got stuff like um, oh um um Gru Referto, which um basically focuses on his uh, on his uh, his his little canine companion, but and uh, who winds up in the modern world and we find out just oh how bad things are. It's like and how how great things are in like Gru's fantasy world. And, and everything. And then also, there's um, uh, Mightier in the Sword, which grew um, encounters like the problems with uh, fighting, with um, you know how how the press can um, sometimes manipulate and, and um, distort stories. It's like based on his uh, based on his adventures. So see, and um, it's like and also stuff like like Hell on Earth, which for my money is kind of the uh, weakest of the Gru series because while you all the advantage of all the Dark Horse stuff. And these um, issue oriented stuff is that there's always like a uh, a um, certain amount of distance kept from the issue at hand. Basically, you've got um, like Gru encountering like uh, taking on a specific issue, but also just like engaging in a lot of the glorious idiocy, idiocy that um, he it's like that he um, tends to take part in. Just like him him getting getting into frays, uh, misunderstanding um, like the simplest of commands. It's like and just. Um, and just being really, it's like being really dumb in all, it's like in all respects. Um, the problem with Hell on Earth is that um, it's basically uh, Mark and Sergio kind of just like taking a hands-on um, approach to the uh, problems of climate change, and you get the feeling, yeah, this is something that's really important to them, but they're also um, hitting it really on the nose, which kind of goes counter to um, how Gru has, t- how previous Gru um, series have tackled the, uh, it's like you know their their respective issues. And so, like that's that, that's always been disappointing to me. But then you've also got stuff like the their follow up miniseries, The Hogs of Hordor, which um, is actually a uh, as rereading it now, it becomes um, really more interesting in the wake of stuff like The Big Short, because basically they take on the whole financial crisis of two thousand eight, done with the done with some with some distance because it came out in twenty ten. So again, it's always fun to see um, see them just as they show all the uh, stuff happen in like. Like in the context of the series, like you know, like this is like yeah, you've got like 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 the banks loaning money like to um people, it's like to people who don't really need it, but also um you got Gru going around causing disasters, like causing the carriage industry to um like like to um find find ways to um re- get get a loan and get bailouts. It's like in order to refinance their um big like their big luxury stuff, but that's not actually what people want. It's like and. Like I said, there's distance. There's distance here. I mean, like you got the car- carriage industry sending in for the, uh, like for the auto industry. You've got um, horses 
um, sending in for the oil industry, and as the uh, lead, the um, the king of Hordor, basically, um, like kick, um, basically uh, leads an attack to um, protect his uh, his horse interests in another kingdom. You realize, okay, they're um, really tying things into the Iraq Iraq War here. So it's actually so it's really so um, Hogs of Hordor is definitely one of the better ones. And like I said, it's only grown in with more relevant more relevant thanks to um, like stuff like the Big Short. It's like and it's like. And like you know, yeah, it's like got a lot of like Gru doing um big dumb stuff. It's like it's still it's still a good it's still a good fun fun read and holds up um really well. Now, and also, and also, I want to point out that um so it, so does the uh, Gru twenty fifth anniversary special, which you can get on um it's like on Comicsology for um, the low low price of you know six bucks. Yeah, it's it's fifty two pages, um, but it's. And so it's kind of, so it's, it is so so it's still pretty expensive, but it's also really fun because once you realize that you know like like with Gru, that Gru is basically coming to a kingdom where people get diseases by kissing each other, um, you eventually realize that hey wait this is a metaphor for STDs, and that's like I said that's that's the fun part of all these of like a lot of the, the uh, socially conscious Gru miniseries that, that Dark Horse has done that it's just this finding um, you know what, what what they find is just um, Realizing the metaphor they're showing here, it's like, and it's, and uh, I de- and I highly recommend um, people checking out the, uh, it's like, um, the 25th anniversary special either um, in print if you can find a copy because you know it's like I, good luck finding a copy in this, like, in this day and age. But um, hey, you can get it digitally from Comixology, which is what I did, and um, I had no problems um, picking up, like I'm um, picking it up for its for its cover price because hey, it's like it was. I I'd originally bought it as a gift for a friend, and then I read it, and I realized, hey, this is a great story. I should I should get it at some point, and you know, hey, I eventually did, like about a week ago. So yeah, so, so yeah, it's like I mean, the uh, like this grew is basically it's it is it's basically a one one note joke series, but um, but it's also something that um, Evanier and um, and uh, Ergonias have shown that you know like. That this this one this one o joke has legs and it's got, and it's only limited by the imagination that that they've got and they've managed to stretch such Gru's adventures it's like across like all sorts of all sorts of boundaries so yeah it's like I mean Marvel stuff is good um fa- um um fantasy um sword and sorcery fantasy um fodder skewering fodder like parody stuff um and the uh, dark horse most of the dark horse series are. It's like our good, it's like our good socially conscious um, stories that um, benefit from like you know like hey it's like they work both as like you know archetypal Gru stories, but they've also got you know that you know that hey you know they, we're also talking about real issues here. We, it focuses, it works both as a proper story and a metaphor for our for, for our world at, world at large, save for um, um, hell on earth. Now the uh, recent uh, maxi series, friends and foes. Is actually kind of a return to the uh, form of the um, old Marvel issues in the sense that you know it's Gru mixing it up with his friends and um, just you know getting into like good good dumb goofy stuff. I mean, like there's not a uh, there, there isn't really any socially conscious stuff to be found here. And on one hand, you know it's it's actually kind of nice just to have a you know hey we got just like the like good straightforward Gru stories like after all these years and it's been good fun and also the. Uh, the one little plot thread they've threaded throughout 12, all 12 issues, like who is the um, orphan Kaylee's father, actually has a nice little payoff at the end when you realize that, hey, she actually is, well, she's not, she's not Gru's daughter, which um, I was, I was um, fully expecting that to be the um, big reveal at the end because, you know, why not? But um, it turns out she actually is the daughter of one of Gru's um, like more uh, like um, linguistically minded um, support, supporting members, but the uh, friends and foes series has been um, great, great fun, like g- a good reminder of all of the good old days of it's like of Gru. It's like, and even though it's like, I will admit that it is um, pretty damn expensive because the the twelve issue buying the uh, twelve issues in collected edition will set you back around forty five bucks. But hey, it's like I don't mind because you know it's Gru. It's like. It's like it's it's got that one that one form it's got a formula, and it works. And though, to be honest, though, one thing I do want to see in the future is um, after um 
Gru's um uh, like adversaries on um, palindrome adopt this um really unruly girl in the hopes of um getting a uh, getting their hands on a fortune. I really like to see more of that in the future because it it does seem like they kind of like Mark and Sergio kind of drop that like after the uh, after the issue they're in. But you know, I think that seeing these two guys you know try to be parents to this um really uh like tomboyish to the extreme girl would be a uh, good be a good source of fun. So maybe like if not if not if they don't get a one shot, then maybe just have them show up in another issue later on, which there will be more because um the next um grew maxi series from Dark Horse seems to be splitting the difference between uh the socially conscious stuff and the uh you know good goofy um entertainment that we've had from them before. Well that's because um the next one is called um, Fray of the Gods. And it's going to be basically um, have Gru work his way through the pantheon of established deities. So um, if you so if you're rooting for, say, um, Buddha or um, or Krishna or Allah or um, Yahweh himself, then you know it's like <laughs> well they they're on one hand they seem to be prepared to piss off everyone here. But you know, it's like hey, it's like these days, Gru is low profile enough that you know it's like it's. I don't think they, it's going to attract as much controversy as they would as they would like. But you know, I think Gru deserves deserves that higher profile for them to like, get that much more trouble. I mean, I guess I'm kind of sending mixed messages here. But you know, I guess yeah, I am wishing that Gru um, was better known in the sense that you know them tackling all of the it's like all of these um, all these deities um, would um, attract a sense. Attract more controversy than it is, which appears to be um, none at the moment. But still, hey, it's a great. I think it's a great stab for the next series, and so I'm very much looking forward to checking it out. In the end, though, um, you can pretty much pick up any of Gru's um, like uh, alphabetically um, titled series from Dark Horse. Like those are the reprints of Mar- of um, the Marvel series, and you can just um, buy any one that you want because they're very self-contained. Um, the um, the Gru Hound book is probably the one I'd recommend because it focuses on the first first appearance of his um, loyal companion Referto. It's like, and it's also the one I start I started with as well. As for the uh, socially conscious Dark Horse miniseries, uh, well, in case you didn't get the message, um, yeah, Hogs of Hordor is the uh, it's like is the one that you is the one you're, you're going to want to pick up. That also, uh, but. If you're looking for um, you know them doing you know friend like um, good classic Gru stuff in the modern era, then Friends and Foes will certainly um, fit the bill as well. Overall, like Gru's a like um, Sergio Marx's um, Gru formula like um, rarely disappoints. It's like you know assuming like you're it's like it's a, you're into that kind of like um, like dumb goofy humor, good times. Okay, so John, um, it's like uh, any thoughts on your end about all this? Um, no, not really. Um, you know, uh, everyone go read Gru. Are you saying that he's underappreciated? These days, yeah, because, um, I mean, in the, back in the 80s, I mean, it's like, yeah, it's like everyone knew, it's like, I mean, it it was a lot easier to get, you know, attention for your, um, comic that wasn't a superhero. So, I mean, that's one of the reasons, that's one of the reasons why, um, the Marvel, um, epic run ran for, like, 10 years and 120 issues. Um, and also, you know, and I'm sure that you know, a lot of people followed um, Sergio from his um, work on Mad on Mad Magazine, where he's been working for several decades now. Mm-hmm. So, so he's kind of he's kind like Sergio is basically a living institution at this point. And if you ever, and he's all he's always there at just about every Comic Con. So you have a chance to check either check him out, see him, meet him in person. Really nice guy. And also, um, his um, panel that he does, the panels that he does with Mark are great fun. Either the Sergio and Mark show. Or the uh, quick draw events at the, uh, it's like, like um, that he, they run as well, where you get to see how Sergio, busy, you get to see Sergio school like just about every other um, like artist, uh, um, out there about how fast, how fast and on point he can be. Mm-hmm. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you go, there you have it, your recommendation, and we'll check you out, check you guys later on Comic Picks by the Glick. All right, later. Bye.